Live from Studio B and KPRC2. Houston Life starts now. Can you believe it? It is September 1st, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today on Houston Life. I'm Derek Shore. And I'm Courtney Savala. Hard to believe it's already the start of a new month. I know, almost the end of 2021. It's crazy. And all this week, you guys, on Houston Life, we're celebrating the best of summer with a look back at some of our favorite moments. Yeah, yesterday we spotlighted some of the incredible Houstonians who have been on our show this year. Today we are sharing what you can do, drink, and eat to help keep everyone cool before summer ends. Yeah, we have a little bit of time for that, yeah. right? Including a local hard cider company and how you can catch some waves wake surfing. Okay, but first, a simple recipe that is full of flavor. We are back with Angie Patton of Good Taste TV. Today, she has been showing us how to make ceviches, now a watermelon version. And yeah. before we get into this, we got to talk about the show. We were talking during commercial break. You are in production on a brand new season of Good Taste with we Angie. Are. We've been in production since April, so we've been traveling literally all over the state. We were in Dallas last week. We've been in the Panhandle. I was telling Joe we were in his old stomping grounds in uh, Cajun country. So yeah, we're everywhere. Houston, you name it, Austin. It's such a great everywhere. job. You essentially meet really interesting people with interesting stories and eat a bunch of delicious food. And Derek, th that's the funny thing. Everyone thinks it's all about the food. And, and yes, the food's great, but it truly, truly is about the people. Yeah. And this year in particular, uh, for me personally, it's been very heartwarming. Uh, these folks have been through unbelievable struggles. And, and honestly, they're still struggling right now, you know, yeah. getting people to come back to work. Um, but yeah, and it's, you. we want you to leave hungry at the end of the show, but we also want you to leave smiling. You know what I'm saying? and feeling better than you did when you started watching. We hope we're inspiring people and uh Get out there. Go out and eat. I think Have you're doing just that, Tangi. So set your DVR as it airs on weekends. Early in the morning, Good Taste TV. Early in Houston. We're on like Saturday evenings, lots of shows, but here in Houston, and we're so proud and pleased to be here. Uh, set your DVR. We're all busy here anyway, right? Well, you're especially busy. <laughs> we love when you make time for us at Houston Life. The watermelon ceviche, I have never had something like this. Yeah. So talk about how it's created. This is a beautiful dish and the flavors are just perfect for this time of year. Of course it's watermelon season in Texas and this is done with halibut. So I, I want to show you how easy this is. This will be your go-to summer dish. There's just a few key things to keep in mind. Okay. You want to marinate your fish Ideally, if you're one, if you're someone who does not want raw fish at all, marinate it for about two hours. Two is plenty. If you want to go three, go three. But the longer you marinate it, you run the risk of it becoming too flaky and falling apart. And okay. Have you ever had crumbly ceviche out somewhere? Maybe and just like. Mm. They marinated it too, too long. long. And, yes. and when we're marinating it, we're using what, a lime juice lime or a lemon juice? juice? And that's actually curing it or sort of cooking it, right? Exactly. And if you taste, lime juice varies. If you taste your lime juice and you think, man, this is just so acidic, I would never even, you know, use it in a margarita or something without adding sugar, add a little orange juice to it. You can tame it a little bit and still keep all the citrus components so that you're still marinating the fish. Okay, that's so, a good little pro tip. I think we have an ingredient list we can throw up on the screen so people yeah. can take a look at what they need to get if they want to make the dish. Does it have to be any white fish? It doesn't have to be halibut? Any white fish. Halibut is an easy one to use because it's, it's easy to work with. Um, you want to chop it into cubes. You don't want them to be too big because you want the fish to marinate all the way through. And of okay. course it picks up the great citrus flavor. So you start with the fish, pull it out of the fridge once it's marinated, dump the juice that you were marinating in. And so just start essentially with your fresh fish, we're right? We're discarding that juice. We're discarding that juice. Okay. And then we're going to add the chunks of watermelon. Mm. And I like to keep all of the components roughly the same size. Uh, it's just easier to eat that way yeah. and, and to present that way. So toss your watermelon in. Okay. Some cucumbers. Persian cucumbers. I love Persian oh, cucumbers. Me too. A little bit of cucumbers. And then you're going to do serrano. We're going to kick it up a notch. Okay. And you'll find, you can cut back on the serrano. You don't have to put the entire amount if you don't like a spicy version. And red onion. You know, red onions are not as uh, astringent, for lack of a better word, as regular onions. They're just a little milder, and they really do add a nice little layer of flavor. Okay. And then They're orange pretty too. juice. Fresh squeeze. Don't, well, if you have to, buy the store-bought juices, but honestly, 
toothbrush is best. There's no comparison, right? So squeeze your own juice that makes it best every time. And I'll, I'll show you some of the cool things to make this easier that I found at Cool Linscombe. Okay. But anyway, so use whatever reamer you've got at the house. Toss it all in. You're going to mix it all together and then garnish. And I've garnished with radishes over here, uh, a little bit of microgreens. You could use a little bit of cilantro, whatever you like, just to make it pretty. Also, it's just such a fun dish to look at. It's beautiful. Yeah, it truly is. It, and no matter how hot and humid you are, you see this, you, you smile, right? Yeah, it looks it's great. Green. And these little microgreens, where did you say you can buy these? Oh, HEB, Central Market, grocery stores have them. Nice, right? It's an unexpectedly delicious combo of flavors. I love it. I love it. And I wanted mm -hmm. to bring out so much of, we eat with our eyes. Mm. So you've got the beautiful bowl of food, and then you can do these beautiful, fun things with your table, right? Um, I found these things at Cool and Scum. I absolutely loved them. I thought they were the cutest things. I don't know if you noticed the napkins, but look at the little buttons and the little tassels oh, hanging yeah. off of them. Um, at least got the beautiful uh, ceramic pieces that you can use and entertain with all year round. And this is an electric juicer. Now, when COVID hit, we all started becoming uh, goal-minded with being healthier, right? Mm -hmm. And I bought a hand juicer, and I will never go back. I love <laughs> squeezing my own juice. This makes it easier for you. This is the Smeg brand. They come in a variety of fun colors. It's a really cool brand, yeah. They're great, but when you get in the habit of having fresh squeezed orange juice, then I'm not saying I hit it every single morning of the week, but I do look forward to it. And it's just a great kick of vitamin C and you feel like you've done something good for yourself and good for your health. Very nice. Very, very nice. And they do a cool and scum has some great outdoor oh, they're just dishes beautiful for summer. Thing. The little bowl, you're, this is acrylic as well. I mean, oh. no, you can't go wrong. I thought it was glass. No. No. Okay. The, the same line comes in a beautiful, delicate, gorgeous glass, but no, these are plastic. Let's talk about the wine. Okay. Uh, to some of our viewers, this first wine will look very familiar. We just featured this <laughs> for our uh, Wine Club Wednesdays. Yeah, we think alike. This is a great wine. That's probably why you're seeing it, you know, again, it really is. This is a Toronto wine, so this is from Argentina. Argentina. Argentinian wines are pretty fascinating because you have the mountains, right, the extreme and mm -hmm. temperatures. Uh, and they make some beautiful wines. This El Origin, uh, the Reserve. A Torontos is just a great grape. On the nose, you're getting all these florals, and then the flavors are tropical. It's a little fruitier than some wines, but it is by no means a sweet wine. Yeah, it's not sweet at all. No. And I think it goes beautiful with ceviche. And for $9. For $9. This is a great, and, and you know the term porch pounder? Yeah. <laughs> This yes. is a great porch wine. It truly is. It's just a great little summer wine. Now, this is another one I'm absolutely loving. Sauvignon Blancs, or I should say Sancerre's, mm -hmm. are big trending right now. Wines trend just like anything else. So a varietal you'll see trending right now on lots of restaurant menus is Sancerre. And if you look at, you know, over to the price of that Sancerre, you're going to pay quite a bit more for a Sancerre than maybe a Chardonnay. Yes. It, it's gotten a little crazy. This Sancerre Sauvignon Blanc, it just happens to come from a region in the Loire Valley that has a designation of Sancerre, right? This is Sauvignon Blanc from the Loire uh, Valley. It's a terrain, so it's another little region in the Loire Valley. And it's about half the price wow. of what you would pay for a good Sancerre. So okay. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, and we have about 30 seconds too. left, but you have a couple more wines okay. there. I want to be sure. Well, to and some of these you're probably familiar with. It is rose season. Uh, I love the Fleur de Prairie. This is on a lot of uh, restaurant menus as well. Mm -hmm. But the Fleur de Prairie, classic Provence style rose, just, just beautiful. And of course, Josh does. We had the rose prosecco earlier. This is the regular prosecco. And it's, it's a delicious good one. too. And of course, all the wines I find, you know where. At HEB. We you love that. You got it right. Lauren and Joe, uh, I think you guys have some, some snacks. Tangie, you know we love you so much. It's not just because you bring us lunch. <laughs> It's, it's much it more than, It's much more. Do you guys want to come over and try some yeah. of the ceviche? Come on, yeah. I was going to say, I'm still working on mine right now. Tangie, oh. I have a quick question. If you were yes. to save some of the ceviche, how long will it last in your refrigerator? I, technically, you might get away with it the next day, but honestly, because there's so many fresh ingredients in it, right. I wouldn't. I, you know, another key component is you really want to buy the absolute freshest fish possible, mm. and you want to buy it the day you're going to make the mm. ceviche, right? Get to know that fishmonger uh, at HEB. He'll turn you on to the freshest fish. White fish is generally 
to me, the best to make ceviche with. Um, but the key, mm. it's very, very important to use the freshest fish. Mm. And I would buy it the day I'm going to serve it. They got the small bowls. I think I'm going to take this one. Uh -oh. <laughs> this I'm is going to be mine. Joe Sands. <laughs> All right, Tangie, thank you so much. It's great oh, to see you. you. Great it's to absolutely see you too. delicious. And Good. just in case you missed any of these steps, we do have the recipe to Tangie's watermelon ceviche on our website, HoustonLife.tv. Today we're learning all about the high pace and super intense water sport, wakeboarding and surfing. And Rinker's Boat World took me out on the water at August Lakes in Katy to show me how to catch some waves. It's another adventure at August Lakes, and I'm here with Jim with Rinker's Boat World to talk all about wakeboarding. A lot of people don't know what wakeboarding is, but it's a really cool water sport. Let's talk a little bit about it. It is. Wakeboarding's a, a great sport, great family sport. Uh, get the whole family on the lake, uh, enjoy some time together. That time together can start from the age of eight and up, where the rider standing on the wakeboard is towed behind a motorboat across its wake, and especially off the crest in order to perform aerial maneuvers and some pretty sick tricks. It's yep. a good day to get out there and do some wakeboarding. Today we're set up with a Super SE 450. That is the largest boat in the Super Line, and we're going to be taking you out, showing you how to wakeboard, showing you how to wake surf. Uh, <laughs> it, Wake surfing, you're, it's a lot like ocean surfing. So you're behind the boat, you get pulled up with a rope, and then once you get in the, the wave where there's push, you can actually let go of the rope and ride endlessly. As long as the boat's moving, you have that wave, you can ride that wave. Wow, now for someone like myself who doesn't do this all the time, what would you tell beginners like me to calm the nerves a little bit more? <laughs> you know, it's it's a very low impact sport as far as wake surfing goes. Wake, wake boarding, you're going a little bit faster, but wake surfing, what we'll kind of focus on today is uh, low impact. When you fall, it's like jumping in a pool. So uh, that's where it's great for all ages. You know, impact levels are, are low and everybody can have fun. Well, you know what? We're ready to go have some fun. We are. Let's do it. Once I learned how to get on the board with some beginner tips from this professional, it was time to catch some weights. Yeah! No, I couldn't pull off all the fancy tricks, but it was such a blast, and you'll be able to experience it all during their pro competition. Okay, we just finished drying off now. What an amazing time we had on the lake here, and it's going to be even a better time for people to come out and check out this amazing competition that's going to be happening on the weekend. Perfect time for people to get out. William here is going to tell us all about it. We're going to have 20 of the top riders in the world just put on a show for all of you. It's going to be amazing. Come one, come all, bring everybody. There's plenty of seating all through the lake. You're going to get an up close and personal view of these guys ripping down the water. It's going to be a really good time. I think Joey may even try out this next year. I'm not sure about making that happen, but we certainly made a splash at this summer adventure that will leave you surfing for more. So much fun that we had out there. Now, this is definitely an adventure the entire family can dive into. I'll have more information on our website, HoustonLife.tv, on how you can do this for the summer. Observatory is so special because it is one of the only observatories with the kinds of telescopes that we have that are available and accessible to the public. We're located in Brazos Bend State Park, so it's such an easy drive from Houston, and it allows folks who, you know, in an urban area, due to the landscape, due to the light dome, we, we kind of lose contact with the night sky. And this is a way for you to drive out maybe 45 minutes out into an area that's in this beautiful state park surrounded by farmland so we retain more of the dark sky out there and you get to see more things than you would in the city. So even though, we, I will say, even though in the city, I'll sometimes look up at the sky and think, wow, look at how crystal clear of a night it is. And look at all those stars up there. 
So we would love to have you come out and then compare that experience <laughs> to what you would see at the observatory. Because actually we, we put in an exhibit about light pollution and we took the same shot, the same view and showed it to you in different, you know, with different lighting conditions. And even folks who are astronomers in their backyards in the city, when they manage to make that drive out there and really get into that dark sky space, we get a lot of oohs and ahs. I bet it's completely breathtaking, totally different experience. Now, Kavita, I want you to tell everybody about the renovations because they just went under a lengthy two-year renovation plan, right? Yes. So this is an interesting story. The observatory opened 30 years ago um, and being in this beautiful, wild, natural setting that we are in, in the state park, it can make long-term and short-term maintenance a challenge, as you would expect. Then you add in some major wind and rain events that took place over the last five years, and also then a desire really to just update ourselves and our offering for the next 30 years. You know, we were able to not only address like infrastructure issues, but we were able to completely redo the exhibit area. We were able to um, bring in some new technology that allowed allow us to still show our visitors what the telescopes see while still preserving all the protocols that we need to. Kavita, thank you so much for sharing all this information. I cannot wait to get out there and experience the George Observatory. Thank you for your time and all this wonderful information. Absolutely, Lorian. Come, come get lost in space with us. So exciting. Don't forget, advanced tickets are required before you head out to the George. For more information, just log on to HoustonLife.tv. They have so many great programs out there. It's good to see their new home is finally up and running. Yeah, ever since I was a kid, I've always been fascinated by and with observatories. Mm -hmm. I just think there's something fascinating about the night sky, and it looks like they're back and better than ever. It's so great and funny. You know, my, my brother Bob is a astrophysicist, and growing up, he made his own telescope. telescope. So we would go Whoa. to the planetarium in Chicago every Saturday. That's where I basically, that was my playground every Saturday. So it has a special place in my heart, but he made his own telescope and at like, I don't even know, he was a teenager, I think, but. That's incredible. How did really he do is. it? Out of what? Grinding this, no, it's glass. Like he ground the glass and did all of it, the magnifying glass and everything. I still have visions of him polishing the glass. That is so cool. Really incredible. I've seen people make them like, I feel like when I was in elementary school, we made them out of like paper towel, paper towel mm -hmm. holders. This was a little bit more advanced. A little more advanced. <laughs> oh, your brother did that? I did that too. Oh, great. <laughs> when I was five. I'm kidding. All right. Sabrina Raisler is the CEO and founder of Fresh and Juicy. It's a lemonade stand out of Sugarland that has earned her the title of 2020 Entrepreneur of the Year. Hello, I'm Sabrina Raisler, the CEO and co-founder of Fresh and Juicy. I live in Sugarland, Texas, and I'm nine years old. We serve four flavors of lemonade, Muddy Bunny, Strawberry, Raspberry, and Original with Light Blue Agave. So we started with the Lemonade Day organization and it helped me learn a lot of things. I learned all the financial and the, and the savings that I needed to earn for my business. I earned enough money to get my bike. I didn't even need to buy it. I won it by earning the prize 2020 Youth Entrepreneur of the Year. And I also have more recognitions and nominations like one that the mayor of Sugarland gave me. We chose Sabrina to be our 2020 Youth Entrepreneur of the Year. We felt that she really grasped the lessons that we taught and she showed a commitment to giving back to the community by choosing a cause that mattered to her. Back to the Reaper's the first organization that helps fight brain cancer for adults, the Dr. Marty Rose Organization. We donate 10% of our earnings to the Dr. Marty Rose Organization. Um, my dad passed away from brain cancer in 2017, so I want others to have a second chance. Well, my business is selling lemonade. I'll never stop it because, like, this is a business, my business. 
hard work pays off, and if you're really passionate about it, I recommend doing it. It doesn't matter what other people say, because um, it all only matters what you think of it and what you think of it. And, that's, and if you're passionate about it, it'll be great. Uh, well, I think we all can agree that Sabrina is pretty incredible. Yeah. I want to buy all the lemonade. Don't go anywhere because after the break, we're chatting with Sabrina about what it takes to run a business. And we'll even get to try some of her tasty treats. Yum. Welcome back to Houston Life. Earlier, we shared the story of Sabrina Raisler, a local childpreneur, or kidpreneur, right, who's winning awards with her lemonade stand, Fresh and Juicy. That's right, and Sabrina is joining us now to tell us more about her successful journey. Hey, Sabrina. Hi. So tell us, how did you get involved in Lemonade Day? Well, my mom, at first, um, we were in the car, and she said, um, I have this program for you, and it involves a lemonade stand, and I was, like, super excited. Um, so the first event was the Build a Stand contest, um, and well, and then there was multiple other events, but it's, it's super, it was super fun when my mom told me about it. Okay, and when you won Entrepreneur of the Year, I know we're sort of, you know, fast forward to today, clearly um, it seems like you've got it down to a science. You, you know exactly what you were doing. That must have been a really exciting piece of news to hear that you had won this award. Oh, yeah. It was, um, I was so excited. I was um, happy crying that day, too. Oh. Um, and um, I got other recognitions as well, like from the mayor, and, and um, it's super fun. I've been on multiple TV shows and everything, and I'm here right now, which is super exciting. Well, we are super impressed with you, and part of your story, Sabrina, that um, people might not know, your father passed away from brain cancer back in 2017. I can't imagine how difficult that must have been for you. Look at this amazing photo of the two of you. And part of your mission is to be philanthropic and to give back. So explain to us how this all works. You're, you're essentially donating money now to support um, all kinds of, of great organizations doing good work? Um, well, we um, donate 10% of our earnings to the Dr. Marnie Rose organization, which is connected to many hospitals, though, including the one that my dad was in, Memorial Herman. And at first, 10%, I was like, no, that's not enough. I need to donate more. And then when I heard that every dollar donated is from 10 to $50 from the government, um, I felt super proud of myself, and it was it, it was so fun to donate. That's fantastic. We love to hear that. So we have some of your products right next to us. Can you tell us about some of your flavors? There are four of them. We have um, um, Muddy Buddy Original Raspberry and Strawberry as our flavors. They're all healthy. They are made with um, brown rice sugar or vanilla, like we say in, uh, like they say in Colombia. Mm. Um, and um, we and we've been expanding my business to more baked goods, like for example, vanilla bean cake. Oh yeah. And vegan banana nut bread. Okay, so Sabrina, I am wolfing down this a bit vegan banana nut bread. It's delicious. Where did the recipes come from? You said your your grandmother. My grandma her makes the um, the recipes for our lemonade. Um, we um, do the, the syrup with the brown or sugar, and um, we mix the syrup with a bit of water and citrus, and um, we get our flavors. We add natural fruit, no artificial colors or preservatives. Everything's healthy. And if you're someone who can't um, take sugar or just can't have sugar, we have the original, which is made with light blue agave, and it has way less calories. Um, and everything's really healthy. Sabrina, have you ever considered running for president? Because I would vote for you. <laughs> Absolutely. I think we, I think you have two voters right here. Sabrina, we got to leave it there. We are out of time, but I know you will have many more customers, and uh, we're just so proud of you. These are delicious, and they taste even better knowing that you're giving back to a great cause. So thanks so much for joining us Thank on Houston Life. Thank you so much Life. for having me. Yeah, you are great. We're going to be watching your career. Sound good? Bye. All right. Take care. We'll see you soon.
Well, tis the season for beach days and outdoor barbecues, right? If you want to help your skin stay healthy, our next guest has easy tips to keep you in mind. Keep in mind this summer, board certified dermatologist, Dr. Sherry Ingraham, our friend of the show. It's great to see you. Good to see you guys. Okay, let's first talk about this sunscreen. We have to, how do we figure out which one is right? Because I feel like you go to the store, there's SPF 1000, there's SPF 500. I don't know which one is, is right for what activity. The most important thing is that it is broad range, UVA, UVB, and SPF 30 or higher. After that, you want to pick something you'll use. So if you're a young person and you don't want a thick sunscreen that smells, you may look for more of a gel or more of a lighter sunscreen. If you're using it on a kid, for example, a stick is great because they can apply it themselves. Neutrogena makes great deodorant looking sticks or even sprays you can apply to wet skin. If you're a woman and you have hyperpigmentation, there's some great new products out. So there's a new product out from SkinCeuticals, which is daily brightening sunscreen. This just came out last week. This actually has transdynamic acid in it. And what that does is it brightens the skin. It'll actually inhibit pigmentation if you have melasma and brown spots. It also has some agents in it like mica that you can use daily on any skin tone regardless of your skin tone. It will work on all skin tones. It won't make them look ashy and it'll give the skin a glow which is really exciting. And then of course I always tell people the best skin care, the best sunscreen is the one you'll use. So for men, I find a lot of times they'll use a sunscreen that doesn't have much of a scent. So I have them usually use something like UV Daily from Elta. It's a great SPF that has zinc in it, but it also doesn't have much of a scent. And of course, if you're someone who's sensitive to sunscreens or you feel like you're allergic, you need a physical sunscreen. So you want to look for something that says sensitive skin or physical. Aveeno, Neutrogena, and Elta all make pure zinc and titanium sunscreen for sensitive skin. Okay, all great options as well. Let's talk about some serums because I know we're always talking about fighting wrinkles and you say vitamin C is the best thing to use and we can do that right now through summer. You can do that every day. I, I always tell people, I don't even think I missed a day, you know, <laughs> before COVID, after COVID, this is my holy grail. And the reason is it is so active in the skin and it's absorbed in the skin, but the key is it has to be at the right pH and the right concentration. So you want vitamin C in a serum form and you want it to be at about 15%, anywhere from about 10 to 25% is the most active, best absorbed by your skin. You wanna put this on in the morning leave it on a minute and put your sunscreen on top. Actually, I've got men who do this because it's so well absorbed, but that creates an environmental shield. So it blocks a lot of this air pollution we have. We now know ozone contributes to brown spots and skin damage, but it also combines with your sunscreen to give you the best environmental shield possible. And then it helps to lighten brown spots and stimulate new collagen. So it's really for everybody. I chase my children around literally in the morning and put this on them as well. I love it. It sounds like a winter product. Okay, Dr. Ingerham, I know we have to say this, avoid the sunburn, but if it happens, what do we do? Yeah, I mean, I hate to tell you, it even happens to me. Dermatologists and my children, you should have seen me at spring break chasing them around trying to heal their sunburns because even on the best of intentions, and the best skincare and sunscreen, if you can get a sun shirt on, remember that sun protective clothing will do better than sunscreen, right? Because you don't have to reapply it, especially if you're in the water. But if you do get burned, a couple of things. The first thing you want to do is take some ibuprofen. You can give your children ibuprofen liquid, or you as an adult can take two ibuprofen. This blocks the release of prostaglandin, which is what makes us feel red and burned. That's day one, okay? You can repeat that on day two. Also getting a compress, a little washcloth with some cold milk on it or cold water, laying it on the area can soothe. And one of my favorite things to do, you can buy this at the drugstore. This is La Roche-Posay mineral water. It's about $13. You can spray this two or three times a day, let it sit for two or three minutes on the skin. It has antioxidants and minerals that soothe the skin. So for a really significant burn, it'll take that temperature down. Also, if you're rosaceous flaring, it'll take the temperature down. And then if you're still uncomfortable, grab some over-the-counter cord aid and put it on those spots that feel burned. Of course, if you're significantly burned or blistered, don't peel or 
pick on those blisters and go see a dermatologist. Absolutely. And I know for TLC for the skin, you say hydration, omega-3s, eat your veggies and fruits, blackberries, raspberries. Those are great boosting. And also make sure you put on enough sunscreen. We hear you every single time. Dr. Sherry Ingraham, always great to connect with you. And thank you so much for sharing all of your knowledge. Thank you so much for having me. I got to hang out with a couple of dads with their sons at the Gents Spot as they got so fresh and so clean clean for their big day. A lot of gentlemen really enjoy getting these services, but we're, they don't really want to get the services in the particular atmospheres. Here at the Gents Spot, we provide all of the necessary amenities to, and, and, and a level of comfort to where, all the, where guys can come in and receive everything that they need to get here at the Gents Spot. Many of those gentlemen preparing for Father's Day and sharing why it's the best thing that's ever happened to them. Well, the best part about it, um, providing for the kids, you know, I didn't go up with a dad in my life, so I make sure that I'm there for my kids at all times. Sons and fathers bonding time at the Gent Spot is something the owner says is the atmosphere that generates great parenting. I don't believe that there's anything more important in life than being a parent, being a father, and being a good father. So, you know, I've dedicated my whole life to making sure that my children are ready to pursue their future endeavors and to be successful in life. So it's very important to me. And his sons agree. My dad has put a lot of emphasis on um, handling your business. That's one thing that was reiterated to me a lot as a kid was handling your business. So now me as a young adult, that's the first thing that I'm, I'm on my mission every day is to wake up. What do I need to get done today and making sure that gets accomplished and sticking to my word? I think it's been a huge emphasis on being who you are and being true to yourself. Um, continuing to stay the course, continuing to stay the grind, continuing to, you know, want to be individual. You know, wanting to be who you are and being confident who you are and being about who you are. Not only can dads enjoy a full-service bar, facials, and haircuts, but a lounge area built for more quality time, something that this father says was important for him. So more than anything, it taught me the importance of just being there every day. It means everything to me. It means um, helping them out, teach them things, watching them grow. Um, just enjoying the ride. His oldest son has enjoyed the ride all the way to college, playing football for Southern University. Everything comes from, you know, what he's seen for, for my life, not really what I've seen for my life, you know, because at a young age, you can't really tell, oh, I want to do this. I know, I, I know in my heart that this is what I want to do in life. He came and provided everything that, I, that showed me what it is that I possibly could do. All that drive coming from one emotion. You don't really tell your son, you know, I love you. It's something that's always been, you know, you understand that, you know. And I kind of, every, every phone call we get off of, I just say I love you, you know, and, and just kind of heighten the importance of the word and, and what it really is. Even though we know that I love you and you love me, we need to show it more and, and show that it is true love. It is, you know what I'm saying, it, I really have you through whatever, even though sometimes you know it, hearing it makes it that much better. So I, I would keep it simple and just say I love you. Yeah, that love goes a long way. Now, the Gent Spot will be open all weekend, including Father's Day, making sure those dads are pressed and ready. I'll have more information on our website, HoustonLife.tv, on how you can check them out. Now is your chance to be a part of the nostalgic family board game Houston style. Walk in, pass, go, collect your money, and then jump right into all of your favorite and iconic Houston landmarks. Well, if you've ever wanted to actually step into a life-size board game, this is the place to do it. Houstonopoly, we are here in the Rice Village today. Look at this. This is a life-size board game card, which you guys know what this means. And I'm here with Sherry Handrino. She's the owner, the creative minds behind repping all things H-Town here <laughs> at Houstonopoly. Yes. This is awesome, Sherry. Thank you. Thanks for coming by today. Uh, there's so many great Instagrammable things yes. Houston-based inside. Let's talk about it and what you got in your hands. Well, I have some Houston money for you oh, so you can play. Stack. I got the yes, stack. Yes, you got the right? stack when you come in. Of course, right now we're in Astro World, oh, which everyone yes. loves. And here's a game piece. As you can see, they're almost as big as us. Very um, cool. All of the art here was done by a local artist, Frankie Cardona. He's amazing, and he freehanded all of this. Freehanded? No yes. way. He's so great. This is actually spray paint. Fun fact. No 
wow. brushes used in this. That's amazing. So. Well, let's keep walking over here. There's so much to see. It's okay. kind of hard to wrap it up all in one. But with this money, I, I noticed the money boxes. I, I roll the dice and stick it in here? Correct. So what you'll do is when you come in, you roll the dice. That'll determine where you start on the game. All the game pieces, as you can see, they're bigger than 10 feet, each one. So if you land here, for example, at Minute Maid, you have to pay $100 for your ticket to the game oh. before you can roll and continue on down the board. Okay, well, let me so. put my $100 yep. in. Very, very cool. Now, what are some of the other iconic spots in Houstonopoly? Well, of course, we have all of our stadiums. So we call it Stadium Row. Okay. Um, we also have our area. We have Turkey Lake Hut. We have downtown with the We Love Houston. So yes. we had to recreate that. We have NASA. So we have our six-foot-tall space astronaut that I you can go to. I see a recording to. studio, too. Of course, music in Houston, right? Absolutely. So we're known for our music with Beyonce to rap a lot, DJ Screw, and we have real records on the wall that are laser cut per artist, original records. And you can't be part of Houstonopoly without going to jail. You got the jail I mean, cell too. Harris County Jail, which I think you have to go to <laughs> next over there. All right, yeah. really quickly, it's the holiday weekend. This is going to be great for the family. When, when are you open? So we are open um, Friday and Saturday. We're closed for the 4th. Okay. Every week we're open every day but Monday, and you can go online to see our hours, and we just, like we were saying, just extended all the way through the end of August right up until school starts. So you can come on out, bring the family, kids, date night. Everyone loves coming out. Collect $200 and pass go, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> Houstonopoly in the Rice Village. Sherry, thank you so much for the info. Thank you. This for is coming. a blast for everybody. HoustonLife.tv for more info. Cheers in honor of World Cider Day. We are raising our glasses to Houston's very first cidery, Courtney. Cheers. Well, Houston Cider Company actually started out as a brewery, but in 2017, they switched gears to produce only cider. And since then, they've taken a hardcore approach to perfecting their craft. I'm Steve Macalello. I am one of the owners of Houston Cider Company. My name is Justin Engel. I am the cider maker here at Houston Cider Company. We are Houston's first production cidery, meaning that we produce everything that we make. I get the lovely uh, job of climbing all the way up to the top of the tank uh, to pitch the slurry in. <laughs> so <laughs> you yeah, can't be afraid of heights around here. We strive to make kind of ciders that represent what Houston is all about. Um, Houston's obviously a very diverse city, um, so we kind of want our ciders to reflect that. So these are some of the ingredients that we use in our ciders. B2B Honey gave us a guajillo a raw honey. This is the hibiscus that we use, a cream Earl Grey tea. These are a bunch of the dry ingredients that we use. A lot of the ingredients that we use are fresh ingredients, so I'll, because of us being at Urban Harvest, I actually do go around to a lot of the farmers at Urban Harvest and take a look at their ingredients, see what's fresh in the time. We're making a essentially a nut extract uh, that we're going to use to build a pie crust flavor. So craft to us means using the best ingredients, uh, means using whole ingredients. If we say our cider has mint in it or if it has, you know, cardamom in it, 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 it really has that in it. You know, we try to use whole ingredients where possible, minimally processed, and I think that you can really taste that in the cider. You know, creating a culture where it's okay to throw out a weird idea and, and not feel like people are going to, like, look at you like, what, what, what's wrong with you? Uh, <laughs> That's really important because sometimes, you know, the off the wall ideas will lead to, the, you know, the initial idea might, might not be much, but it might lead to a really good idea, final idea, you know. As Houston's, like, first production cidery, it's, it's almost incumbent on us to take that responsibility kind of seriously and make sure people are left with the, the right impression of cider, you know. Well, joining us now are Houston Cider Company co-founders Steve Macalello and Justin Engel to walk us through a little cider tasting. Guys, it's great to meet you. Congrats on the cidery. I feel like we should be calling you scientists because <laughs> it seems very technical the way uh, you make your, your products. But I think it's really cool that you want to make your ciders as diverse as our lovely city here. Hi, guys. Yeah. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Sorry, we appreciate you being on the show. Uh, yeah, it is really important for us to, to kind of reflect what Houston is in, in our product and in its lives. That's a big deal for us. Before we get to the tasting, guys, okay, I'm a newbie. So cider is in its own category, right? It's not a beer. 
Correct. Uh, cider is made with, uh, our cider is made with all apples. Um, so all the apples are fermented with yeast and that yeast produces CO, uh, CO2 and alcohol from the sugars in the apple. And then we have the joy of uh, adding additional ingredients to make some of the flavors that you have in front of you. Well, and uh, I was sipping a few of them during <laughs> your story just now, so I will admit that. But what's really cool about uh, each taste, y you have really created something that is vastly different than anything I've tasted before. Let's get to the tasting. The first one is a bit dry, and you call this the OG of the core four. Yeah, that is, uh, the dry is one of the, the first items I think we have ever made. Um, and like its name says, it, it is on the dry side, which means that it doesn't have very much sugar in it at all. I think the, the, the 12 ounce can has about two grams of sugar in it, so it's pretty dry. And it is so light. I mean, again, I'm looking at this and I keep thinking it's going to be a heavy sort of like a beer and it's not like that at all. And you say this particular one pairs great with spicy foods like a Thai curry. I could see that for sure, cutting that spiciness. Yeah, exactly. It's got a lot of really kind of bright acidity to it. Um, you're going to get some like green apple notes in there, but at the end, uh, you know, as, as, you, as you swallow, you're going to get kind of a, it's going to leave your palate kind of clean and refreshed. And that really helps cut through any kind of spicy foods or any kind of rich fatty foods. Yeah, the green apple is definitely coming through. Let's move on to the second one. This is a cherry flavor. Yeah, so for the cherry, we use tart uh, Montmorency cherries from Michigan. Um, so, and the cherries themselves have a great flavor with them. It's very nuanced and complex. Uh, so a lot of our uh, cider drinkers, they get some cinnamon notes and nutmeg notes, a little bit of like uh, spicy notes with uh, a, a really good cherry flavor. This has reminds me of Thanksgiving. I mean, it's so flavorful. And the first thing I noticed about this too is how fragrant each and every one of these we can smell them all. It's really incredible. And you say that um, the cherry pairs well with like an orange roasted duck or even a herbed roast, roasted chicken. We're moving on now to this one called Singapore Sling. And this is uh, a smaller batch, is that right? Yeah, that's one of our small batch items. Um, those are only available through our top room and we come up with a new one every week. Super cool. And the small batch, as you mentioned, at the tap room, if you want to get that handwritten label, which is super cool, people can buy the Core 4 ciders at HEB Whole Foods, Total Wine, Specs. But again, only at the tap room can you get these small batches. What do you think, Courtney? This is so good. Walk us through the tasting notes really quickly of this Singapore slang. Sure. Yeah, that one's inspired by the classic cocktail, uh, which is a gin-based cocktail. So instead of putting gin in it, we took, uh, we made our own house blend of gin botanicals. Um, and we fermented this apple juice with those gin botanicals to kind of get that gin flavor in there. So it's that juniper is there, that kind of coriander is there. Um, a lot of other flavors in there as well. It's delicious. All right, guys, we're just about out of time. But before we go, this hibiscus mint, I think might really be my favorite. They're all delicious, but if I had to pick one, I love that this is so unexpected. Where does it get its flavor? With the hibiscus mint, the cider is made with uh, fresh mint and hibiscus, so that fresh mint provides a lot of great flavor to it, and particularly for the Houston summers, it's going to be a nice cooling effect from the mint. Oh, you hit the nail on the head. All of these are fantastic. I'm newfound love for ciders, but these last two are going to be at the pool with me this summer. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Engel, Steve Macalello, thanks so much. We'll see you at the tap room very soon. Cheers. 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 Thank you. such a fun show and we have to remember we should definitely do SPF all year round here in Houston. We need it in this city. That watermelon ceviche to try the recipe and also that cider was fantastic. I'm hungry now. I know and thirsty. It was yummy. Thanks so much for joining us today. But stay tuned. KPRC 2 News at 4 o'clock is next.